Hi, welcome to the next of our series of mini lectures on designing a zoom lens. What we're going to be focusing on today is to be able to begin to measure the performance of an imaging system. And we'll look at the end of this mini lecture at one technique to actually do quantitative measurements of how well an imaging system performs. But first we need a little bit of background on why even a perfect imaging system isn't going to be able to give you a perfect image. So let's take a look at our sort of ideal imaging system where we have, have two objects, a red object and a blue object emitting rays of light over on the object plane and forming an image on the image plane. And typical glasses uh, have indices on the order of around 1.5 as shown here. Uh, here we have a, a double convex lens which has a pretty good Coddington shape factor for forming an image that looks pretty conjugate right here. Um, and we know that due to aberrations over here where the image is formed, not all the rays are going to meet up perfectly. But let's do a, a Gedanken, a thinking experiment, where we go ahead and we redesign a perfect aberration-free lens. Um, we might do this, say, by having a material that has an index of refraction that approaches infinity. And, of course, as the index of refraction goes up, the curvature of these surfaces and the thickness of this lens can drop down to zero. So the thickness approaches zero as the index of refraction approaches infinity here. Um, and in this case, one might think, gee, this really is a perfect lens if it could be made. And if all the rays of light that started at a point here could potentially end up at a point, in other words, if we zoom in on this, we see that the area that the rays cross, the, the region that cross, has an area of zero. Um, but fundamentally, we know that something's a little fishy about this, because we know from optics that the intensity of a beam of light is the power, or the amount of energy in these, these rays over time, divided by the area. Um, as the area approaches zero, the intensity is going to approach infinity. And anything that approaches infinity in the real world gives us problems. Um, we haven't learned this in this class, but the intensity of, of light is proportional to the square of the electric field. So if intensity becomes very large or approaches infinity, the electric field approaches very large values. And if the electric field gets larger than about 10 to the 6, or 1 million volts per meter on the order of 10,000 volts per centimeter, uh, then air starts to break down, and this, this perfect imaging system, in fact, would create a region of little lightning bolts and sparks as it ionized the air, uh, which we don't really observe happening except in special cases when you can observe it happening. Um, so, so this idea of rays focusing down, even in a perfect lens, to zero spot size is physically kind of ridiculous. And the reason even perfect optical systems won't focus down to a point is due to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. And we're not going to cover this very much in this class. We'll learn a lot more about this in the follow-on class that studies laser systems. But the thing we're interested in as far as the Heisenberg uncertainty principle goes is that the spread of K vectors of the light, which is essentially the, the, the angle the light travels or proportional to the momentum of the light, multiplied by the size of an aperture, delta x, has to be greater than or equal to 1 half. And what this says is if aperture sizes or spot sizes approach 0, if the size of a light source approaches 0, the range of k vectors becomes very, very large. And this range of k vectors is expressed as the angles of a ray of light. And we'll see an example of this in just a minute. And, and what it means is there's an inverse relationship between the aperture, the size of an optical system, or the size of a source, and the resolution. If you have a big aperture in an optical system, um, i.e. a very big lens, you have potentially good resolution. If you have a small aperture, you get potentially poor resolution. And these apertures are expressed through two formulas here that we're going to look at a little bit differently. But this is from your reading assignment and goes into the expressions for estimating how big the range of angles uh, coming out of an optical system is, or in a, a focusing imaging system, how big the spot that can be imaged is. But let me talk a little bit about this idea of aperture before we go into the details of these equations. Um, here we have three optical systems, each of which has an aperture. Um, the smallest aperture in the top optical system is really given by the place in the imaging system or optical system that the rays of light have the smallest diameter. Um, 
D right here. Um, if we look at the second imaging system, we see that D is in fact defined by physical aperture that's put in front of a lens, and we'll talk about physical apertures later. And the third imaging system, we see that the value of D, the size of the aperture of this optical system, is in fact defined by the size of the smallest lens because some rays are, are missing this lens. So there are multiple ways to define the size of an aperture D in an imaging system, and you really have to look at a ray tracing of your optical system to determine what D is for your particular system. But now that we know how to define the aperture of an optical system, let's go 